Ion Fury is a boomer shooter that saw its full release in 2019. Developed by Voidpoint and published by 3D Realms, Ion Fury is a modern game that runs on a game engine from the 90s. Well, an updated version of that engine. This would be the build engine, the same engine that classics like Duke Nukem 3D, Shadow Warrior, and Blood ran on. Technically, Ion Fury runs an Eduke 32, but this is still very cool that a modern game runs on this old technology. In Ion Fury, you play as Shelly Bombshell Harrison, a character that was originally going to be introduced in Duke Nukem Forever, with concept art of this character even dating back to 1997. Due to licensing reasons, however, this game does not officially take place in the Duke Nukem universe. But it is interesting to know where the character's roots are. Much like in other Build Engine games, Shelly is not a silent protagonist, and she will give short quips and one-liners regularly during gameplay. Speaking of gameplay, Ion Fury plays much like Shadow Warrior, with a heavy emphasis on quick weapon swapping dependent on situational awareness. The weapons you start with are an electrified baton and an 18-chambered revolver known as the Loverboy, which fires three magnum rounds at once. This gun remains useful throughout the campaign, especially with its alt fire that can lock onto multiple enemies and slightly slow down time when lining up your shots in this mode. What follows is a flurry of rapid-fire shots that nail all targets with precision. Next in the lineup is the Disperser, a gun that can alternate between both shotgun and grenade launcher firing modes. While I would have preferred a completely separate grenade launcher so that I could appreciate another beautiful and unique weapon sprite, the Disperser is a very useful tool in your arsenal. My name. In addition to this, there are the Penetrators, a pair of SMGs that can be dual wielded and set enemies on fire. Very nice. The Ion Bow, which you can find in a secret area early in the game, is an incredibly powerful crossbow that is great at landing headshots at any range, an important feature of Ion Fury's combat. You can eliminate enemies very quickly with this weapon, as it can be fired very rapidly, and it basically fills the role of a railgun. And like I said, a railgun that you can fire very rapidly. However, it also has two alt fire modes. With one, multiple bolts can be fired at once in a wide spread, which is great for dealing with some of the game's tougher enemies. With the other, the Ion Bow can be fully charged to unleash about 30 bolts in a rapid, wild succession, basically making this firing mode the game's BFG. The last gun in the base game's lineup is a chain gun, which does have a bit of a slow wind-up, but functions just as you would expect it to. Much like in many other boomer shooters, guns are not the only tools in your belt. Ex 
explosive options like the bowling bombs and cluster pucks, clever name, are very useful in most situations, with the bowling bombs being the real standout, seeing as how they are essentially grenades that you roll across the ground like a bowling ball and track targets like heat-seeking missiles. All of these weapons are put to great use against the onslaught of enemies that Ion Fury throws. The main villain is Heskel, a twisted and power-hungry scientist with an army of cyborg creations and techno-cultists at his disposal, and he is voiced by John St. John, the voice of Duke Nukem. The player is faced with cyborg soldiers that carry most of the same weapons as the player, and even though I didn't die much over the course of my recent playthrough, because I am an absolute shad gamer, just kidding. The grenade launching soldiers tended to kill me the most if I rounded a corner a bit too enthusiastic. Ion Fury also isn't missing some more annoying enemy types, such as the fast flying bony whoops, hope I pronounced that right, that dart all over the place and can be very difficult to hit. And then the hopping crawling mech set. In addition to this, there are plenty of large mechs, centipede like robots, zombies, mechs on treads, and turrets. However, three of the most fearsome enemies in my opinion are the Deacons, Skin Jobs, and Wendigos. Deacons are flying human corpses that have had several cybernetic modifications grafted onto their flesh, including a pair of rocket launchers that can really mess you up. Skin jobs are muscular, skinless freaks that can teleport all over the place and shoot large balls of energy at the player. I find that the chain gun is a good way of stun locking this enemy until it explodes into nothing. Then of course there's the Wendigo, a brutally messed up, hulking abomination that can leap great distances very quickly and can unleash devastating melee attacks if you fail to keep your distance. And to top it all off, all of these enemies, much like the game's weapons, are displayed with what is probably some of the best, most detailed sprite work that you will ever find in a 2.5D shooter. Facing these enemies can be as difficult as you want it to be, with Ultra Viscera being the equivalent to Doom's Ultra Violence mode. However, I prefer to play on Maximum Fury as I feel this offers a real challenge. As stated previously, Ion Fury runs in an updated version of the build engine, and this engine is pushed to its absolute limits in this game. Environments are beautiful and highly detailed, with plenty of interactivity on offer, which is a staple of build engine game design. Neo DC in the surrounding area has a great lived-in feel as you traverse its city streets, bars, office spaces, stadiums, malls, laboratories, and countryside. And yes, there is even a train level. And all of this is complemented by a very fitting soundtrack. It is also worth noting that all of these environments are absolutely packed full of secret areas. So many secret areas. More than any other boomer shooter I have played. 
In these secret areas, you can find health, ammo, and armor pickups, which is to be expected, but there are sometimes references to other games, and most of them are very well hidden. They promised me cake. Good luck trying to find all of them, because you probably won't. While the final boss of the base campaign isn't that great, the rest of the game's boss fights and combat encounters are very fun to blast through. And now that Aftershock has been released, players are treated to 13 new levels in this expansion. In Ion Fury Aftershock, many new variants of cyborg enemy types are introduced, as are new robots and the deadly GDF troopers. Light GDF troopers move quickly and erratically, almost like a deathmatch opponent that reminded me of the Scarge from Unreal, while the heavy troopers wield chain guns that can melt Shelly in no time. Luckily, Aftershock also adds a new weapon and two new ammo types for the Disperser to deal with these new threats. The new weapon is called the Home Wrecker and is pulled from the hover bike that you ride for a large portion of the campaign. Something that was missing from the base game was a rocket launcher type of weapon, and fortunately, the Home Wrecker fills that role with the ability to launch one projectile or more at once with the alt fire allowing the multiple projectiles to seek out targets, kind of like the bowling ball. The new ammo types for the Disperser are gas grenades and explosive pellets for the shotgun firing. A major addition to Ion Fury and Aftershock's campaign is the aforementioned hover bike, which is a vehicle that controls so smoothly that I swear these developers could make a racing sim in the build engine. The speed and responsiveness was nailed so perfectly and the portion of the expansion where you're riding this thing is actually quite reminiscent of the vehicle sections from Half-Life 2. While the base game had a few power-ups at your disposal, Aftershock adds a whole host of several new creative power-ups, which include buffs to ammo counts, energy drinks that slow down time, flame traps, and vulnerability, a parasite power-up that allows you to gain health from enemies as you damage them, and even an inflatable chair that can be used to get up to high places such as ventilation ducts for secret hunt. The expansion is about half the length of the base game, but it is obvious that attention to more environmental variety was a big focus, as grocery stores, construction sites, canals, graveyards, a police station, a gas station, and the inside of an active volcano are all new settings to wreak havoc. Ion Fury and Aftershock are examples of peak boomer shooter design. The combat, sprite work, enemy variety, environmental aesthetics, and its overall character 
all come together to produce a beautiful, vibrant, violent, and fun package that is worth revisiting again and again. Ion Fury came out at a time when the Boomer Shooter Renaissance was still in its infancy, as it released close to the same time as titles such as Dusk, A Medieval, and Project Warlock. And yet, it still stands as one of the best in recent years. If you haven't already, go play it. Now is a better time than any. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to like and subscribe and dislike it if you did. That's all for now, so enjoy the rest of your day.